Do you have tight, painful, or niggling areas of the body that are constantly giving you grief? Well, SMR might just be the answer for you. But if you don't know what SMR is or how to go about performing it, then you need to stay right there because in this video, we're gonna jump into the gym. I'm gonna take you through the world that is SMR, plus give you three examples that you'll be able to perform in your own time to target three commonly affected areas. So if that sounds like something you're interested in, stay right there and we're gonna get straight into it after the intro. Hey guys, Hayden here. So today we are going to be talking about SMR or self myofascial release. Also, we're gonna go through three drills that will help with your tight, painful, niggling areas of the body. Before getting to that, however, please be advised that everything I say in this video is certainly not gospel and should not replace any advice given to you by your physician. So with that out of the way, let's jump straight into it. And the first thing we've got to talk about is what is SMR? And so, like I said before, it's self myofascial release. And if we break that terminology down, we can see self meaning mu, and then myo meaning myocytes or muscle cells, fascial meaning fascia, and then and obviously release meaning release. So in short, it's just basically releasing the myofascial, so the muscle cells and the fascia of the body. In short, fascia is sort of a webbing that covers our muscles. It, there's chains all through the body, there's slings that travel diagonally. Uh, there's one long one that goes right from the top tip of our skull right down to the ball of our feet. And it has to do with transmitting forces and also proprioception among others. Generally, SMR is performed with various apparatus such as foam rollers, balls, uh, trigger points, and also just other objects such as sticks, barbells, basically anything that sort of provides a little bit of feedback when you press it upon your body. Why SMR is so beneficial to people and perhaps it's something that you have seen happening in the gym that you frequent or you've seen online or you just heard about it is because it, it provides you a, a simple practice that you're able to do in your own time that, to help with the niggling areas or the painful or the tight, tight areas of the body. All you need is a foam roller or a ball and you're able to hit certain parts of your body that are giving you grief. After performing SMR, you're going to feel a whole lot better. You're going to feel that kind of release in the areas that were giving you grief initially and then you can follow it up by hitting up some strength thrills to waken up those inactive or weak areas of the body. Speaking of those areas that you're gonna target after SMR, if you keep on top of those areas that were weak or inactive, you're gonna be keeping those painful, tight or niggling areas away for a lot longer. Since fascia is made up of slow response fibers known as Pacinian and Rufian, we can then use that knowledge to our advantage when we are performing SMR. And how we do that is by using the apparatus that we choose, so either foam roller, ball or whatnot, and we then go about slowly rolling upon the surface that is giving us grief. We can aid in this by then performing a tack and stretch method after finding certain areas of the body that are giving us grief. So we apply pressure on, this, on the point and then we go about moving the most proximal joint through its range of motion or as much range of motion as possible. I will be demonstrating that in the drill, so just keep that in mind for now. What I mean by slow rolling is literally sort of thinking about moving along the body at around about an inch per hour. Not necessarily per hour, but if you think about it, just a real slow movement so you can hit all those fibers. So just capping off how to perform SMR, when you are doing it, you wanna think about rolling really slowly along the body, finding those niggling areas. When you find one, pause, and then go through the tack and stretch, so bending the closest joint through its range of motion. I'm gonna demonstrate those methods now in the foot, the shoulder, and the iliotibial band release. So let's jump straight into that. So first up, we're gonna do the foot SMR drill, and we're gonna use a hockey ball for this one, but by all means, use a baseball, a lacrosse ball, or perhaps even a golf ball if you really wanna get into the nooks and crannies of your foot. And so we're gonna place the ball down on the ground, and then from there, all you need to do is just place your, one of your feet upon the ball. And you're gonna think about now applying pressure into the ball. So you wanna really try to put some weight into it by leaning over that foot. So as we, as we begin the ball rolling from around about the top of the foot, we can slowly, like I was saying in the intro, we wanna do it really slow, about one inch per hour type of thing. Not actually one inch per hour, but that type of speed. And we're gonna roll nice and slow up the arch to begin with of the foot. And we're gonna just pause on any niggling spot. So if we find a spot that's a little bit painful, a little bit niggling, we can pause and go through, open the toes and then relax over the ball again. You can even do small circles. So just mini circles on top of the ball, trying to keep your weight over that ball the whole time, applying pressure into it. So nice mini circles. When we've done around about maybe five or so rotations or perhaps even three to five breaths in that, in that specific location, we're just gonna continue the roll up the arch of the foot. And so once we've done the inner side of the foot, we can obviously go around and do the outer side. 
So the same same principles. We start from the from the ball. Uh, sorry, the yeah, the ball of the feet, and then we're gonna slowly roll up towards the heel, nice and slow. Finding a niggling spot, pausing, just doing mini circles, opening up the toes, breathing throughout it. So deep breaths, and then just continuing along the way, all the way up to the heel. You want to spend around about 30 to 60 seconds on each foot. And again, just using any ball that you've got available, the denser the ball, the harder it's going to be on your foot. But you can obviously adjust by perhaps starting with a tennis ball and moving, working your way up towards a golf ball. So have a play around with that one. Adjust accordingly, depending upon your pain tolerance or the specific locations upon the foot that might give you a little bit of grief. Just take your time with it as well and always think about breathing and relaxing into it. So next up we're going to do the shoulder SMR drill and we're going to use the ball again for this one. So all you need is a wall or you can use the floor, but the floor is going to be a little bit more extreme than the wall. So we're going to start with the wall firstly. So coming up against the wall, placing the ball just behind the shoulder girdle. We want to find that little groove in between the, the upper arm and the shoulder. Once we find that location, we're going to just sort of give it a little bit of pressure. So just pushing our weight into the wall. Elbow comes up nice and high, so it's around about parallel off the ground. And we're just going to again put, put a little bit more pressure into it, sort of wiggle it around to find a niggling area. And then we're going to support the, the elbow with the, our other hand, and then we're going to just bring up that arm, sort of externally rotate through the glenohumeral joint and see if we can touch that wall with the hand, keeping it nice and straight the whole time. So again, the elbow is going to be parallel to the floor the whole time, light support and rotation. So with this one as well, have a play around. You can sort of adjust it to different areas upon the shoulder, find those little different grooves that give you a bit of grief and pause. Same thing, raise that elbow up and go slight rotation or as ma maximal as you can. See if you can touch that wall. If you can't actually touch that wall, it's no problem. Just go with your ability. And if you want to increase that intensity, you can bring the elbow a little bit more away from the wall and then try to externally rotate to give yourself a little bit more extra range requirement. Another alternative to that external rotation SMR drill is you can place the ball against, against the wall again, and this time you're gonna bring your arm across your body. And this one you can just sort of feel out, just like the foot drill, where you're just wiggling it around in small, loca small circles upon the shoulder joint, just finding those niggling areas. When you pause on it, pause on an uh, area that's affected, just again, relaxing, deep breaths in, and just applying pressure towards the wall. So have a go at that one. The wall, again, is gonna be the less extreme version compared to the floor one. And lastly, we're gonna perform SMR on the iliotibial band. We're gonna use the foam roller for this one. I got two types with me. I got the softer blue roller and then the denser rumble roller. I'm gonna go with this one for the iliotibial band. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna place this down on the ground and then we're gonna come down into a side plank upon it. So the best way to get into position is coming down so the roller is directly under the knee firstly, and then coming into a side plank. So now, as you can see, my knee joint is just below the roller and I'm supporting my weight with my forearm and I'm trying to keep my shoulder weight over my elbow. If this is a little bit difficult for you, you can change the positioning of your top leg so you can base out and just give yourself a little bit more, less resistance on the roller. Uh, so once we're in position like this, all we're going to do is slowly roll so that the roller comes up towards the hip joint. It's a nice and slow roll. Again, it's one inch per hour style. When we find a little niggly spot, all we want to do is just base so we're able to bend that bottom leg now. So nice and slowly, just trying to give it as much range of motion as we can. When we complete about three to five reps, we can just continue the roll up towards the hip joint. Again, when we find that new location, bending slowly through its random range of motion as much as possible. Whilst doing this, feel free to adjust your body weight so that the shoulder stays directly above the, the elbow during it. And you want to work your way all the way towards the top of the hip. Once you complete the, the whole distance, you can obviously switch sides, but with this one, because it's, it might be quite painful for you, just take it easy with this one. If you need to stop, feel free to. It's not supposed to be stressful or give you anxiety every time you pick up a foam roller.
Let me know what you thought of those drills, guys. This video was meant for just a little bit of an introduction to the world of SMR. I gave you three drills, so the foot, uh, the IT band, and the shoulder, so that you can sort of play around with the principles that apply to those ones on other areas of your body as well. If you have any questions on anything discussed in this video, be sure to hit up the comment section. If you learn anything, leave a like, and if you want more videos like this, make sure you hit that subscribe button to help me out. And I guess that's about it for this week, so thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.